let's start taking care of ourselves this year. Like now's the time to do it. Now is when it really matters. Every single inch of yourself, every single cell in your body needs care and love. You're the only person who can take care of it. You know, your body does so much to take care of you. It just needs your help. It's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, it's a probiotic. A lot of people talk about how great it is for the skin. It's amazing for the skin, but it's even greater for your inside and strengthening your immune system. Those secrets and tips that nobody ever tells you about juicing. This is what no one tells you. Hello, my Trinity Beings. Welcome back to Fit, Fierce, Fun, the place where we bring the mind and the spirit to fitness so we can look our best and feel our best. Today we're going to be talking about internal self-care, how to strengthen our immune system, and how to fight against the cold and flu season, which is upon us right now. Nobody wants to get sick, nobody has time for getting sick. Even a simple cold or flu is something no one wants to deal with right now. So I'm going to equip you with as much information as possible to make sure you can fight against any type of virus or infection and really cleanse and make sure your body is in tip-top shape from the inside out so that you can have a peace of mind knowing that your body is ready to fight for you and prevent and fight off any virus infection to the best of its possible ability, giving yourself a really good fighting chance. Sorry, I needed water. So the first tip that I wanna get into is taking vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is not just any vitamin. Vitamin D is a hormone. Vitamin D is actually a steroid hormone. And what vitamin D is capable of doing is entering the cell wall and entering the nucleus and attaching itself to the receptors and having an effect on transcription. Now, let's back up a little bit and have a little basic biology recap. DNA is responsible for generating the code for the cell's activities, while RNA is responsible for synthesizing that DNA into proteins to tell the cell what functions to carry out. It's basically coming in and telling all the cells, all right, it's time to be strong and it's time to be ready to fight in case someone comes in here and tries to cause problems. So vitamin D is a very, very, very essential vitamin that you need to be taking every single day. So let's talk about how to get our vitamin D now that you know how important it is to have it. There are two ways to get it. You can get it through sunlight and through supplementation and foods. Now, you can only produce vitamin D if you're getting enough sunlight. And also, no matter how much of it you're taking supplement-wise, you need some sunlight to activate the vitamin D. So it's very important for you to be outside in the sun, especially in the winter months when we're further away from the sun and we're not able to get as much of it um, as we are in the spring summer months. So the National Activity Human Pattern Survey um, found out when they did a study that um, Americans only get about 7% or 7.6% of sunlight every single day. That is nowhere near enough sunlight. If you're one of those like people who likes being indoors and never goes outside, you got to step out on your balcony, step out on your porch, step out in your backyard, do something to get sunlight. Um, spend some time outside, spend time in nature, go for walks. I mean, there's so many benefits to being outdoors and being in nature, and the, the vitamin D you get from the sunlight is one of the most crucial benefits, especially in these winter months. Bundle up. Make sure you are completely bundled up and warm, but just get yourself out there so that the sun can hit you and you can start um, activating the vitamin D. So. Also, supplementation is very important in the winter months. You need to be supplementing um, in these months because you're not able to get as much sunlight, even if you are spending a lot of time outside because we're in a position in the earth where we're very far away from the sun. The whole um, middle of the country um, is, is far away from the sun. So unless you're in like South Carolina and down, um, you're naturally not going to get as much vitamin D. So now that you know to spend time outside, 
where are you gonna get your um, additional vitamin D from? Obviously, supplementation, taking vitamin D pills, I take them every day, um, but you can also find vitamin D in foods. Um, mushrooms carry vitamin D. Um, they're able to produce it naturally when um, exposed to sunlight. So having lots of mushrooms in your diet is a good idea. I believe the mushrooms with the most vitamin D in them are portobello and chestnut and baby chestnut mushrooms. So if you don't like mushrooms, I mean, I don't know who doesn't like mushrooms. I know people don't like them. I don't understand it because I love them. They're delicious. <laughs> um, if you do like mushrooms, get more in your diet. Um, also, um, fish oils contain vitamin D. So eating lots of nice oily fish like salmon or taking fish oils can be beneficial. Vitamin D is actually also found in egg yolk and red meat. Now we know we shouldn't go crazy with the red meat, but knowing that red meat carries vitamins such as iron and vitamin D uh, is, is good to know, especially if you're a female and you crave a nice juicy steak that time of the month, like I do in my moon cycle, <laughs> you're gonna be getting an extra boost of vitamin D um, when you indulge in that as well. Let's talk about the things you should avoid when it comes to vitamin D. Now, it has been shown that high fructose corn syrup you guys know how I feel about that stuff. <laughs> it's been shown that that accelerates the inactivation of vitamin D, which basically means that high fructose corn syrup is going to put a halt to your vitamin D production. Um, so stay away from that stuff. There's a million reasons to stay away from it. I talk about it here in this video, um, but just stay away from it and get your vitamin D. So now that you know all about vitamin D, why you should be taking it, and why you should be out in the sun, let's talk about the next way to upgrade your internal self-care game, and let's talk about herbs. Let's talk about herbs. Now there are many herbs um, and foods that you can ingest that will boost your immune system and make you a virus infection fighting machine. And we're gonna start off with one of my favorites, which is turmeric. Everyone knows the benefits of turmeric at this point. It's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, it's a probiotic. I mean, a lot of people talk about how great it is for the skin, and it's amazing for the skin, but it's even greater for your insides and strengthening your immune system. Um, it's anti-inflammatory, so if you have um, inflammatory issues, digestive issues, turmeric is what you need to be taking. They have turmeric pills. Um, those are a great option if you don't like the taste of it. I always add it to my foods. I make curries with it. Um, I make like, you know, little home fries, like oven baked fries. Just want to specify oven. I know how to make a really great crispy oven baked fry recipe, by the way. No deep frying needed and it's crispy and crunchy. But I'm <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting off track. <laughs> I add turmeric to those. I just, I, I add turmeric to a lot of my food. I'm always cooking with turmeric um, and I also make a turmeric latte all the time which is delicious I just add um, some almond milk heat it up in a pot I add um, like a teaspoon or tablespoon of turmeric depending on how I feel that day I add cloves which are actually also very good for your immune system it's great for um, diabetes um, it's great for liver, it's great for regulating blood sugar, it's great for uh, bone health, it's great for um, your oral, like your mouth health. It's really high in antioxidants. It is an amazing um, herb as well. And I also add cinnamon, which is also great for your immune system. Cinnamon also has many benefits for the body as well. Um, and then I add, um, so, oh yes, a dash of black pepper because that always activates the turmeric so that your body can ingest and digest um, and take on the benefits of turmeric better. Um, and then I add a little bit of honey or maple syrup or date sugar to my turmeric tea and I froth it up and it is absolutely delicious. It's great for the morning and night 
you know, it's, it's a tea that is caffeine free. I'm a big tea drinker, I love tea. And um, this is one of my favorite things to drink. And it's great for your brain health as well. So if you're having issues with focus, brain fog, concentration, you're trying to get more things done, highly recommend the turmeric tea. And it's gonna boost your immune system as well. Next is ginger, the amazing, amazing ginger, antibacterial, antimicrobial, um, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, anti-bad, it's anti-everything bad. You should be um, ingesting ginger um, as consistently as possible. I like to have ginger um, every day. I put it in my juices, which we'll get into very soon, and um, add it to a lot of my food. Um, this is an Asian household, so I'm cooking with ginger very, very often, very frequently, and I love ginger. I mean, the smell of it, the taste of it. And you know what goes great with ginger? Our next herb, which is garlic, which is just as beneficial, antibacterial, antimicrobial, um, anti-inflammatory. <laughs> garlic is everything. I love garlic, I love the taste of it, I love the smell of it, and I, I cook with garlic every day. I always use fresh garlic. I feel like cooking without fresh garlic is like borderline a sin. Like you, if you're not cooking with fresh garlic, please start today. <laughs> like, I mean, there's so many benefits from garlic and it makes the flavor of the food just amazing. I don't know how people live without it. I talked about the cinnamon um, with my turmeric tea. Cinnamon is actually great for immune boosting. It's great for strengthening the immune system. Um, and everybody, I think, likes to taste the cinnamon. I don't know anybody who doesn't. I know there are a lot of people who don't like things like mushrooms and maybe don't like garlic or ginger, but I feel like everybody likes cinnamon, right? Right? Maybe, hopefully. Hopefully you do, because it's great for you. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is fire cider. Now, fire cider is um, a combination of a lot of the things that we just talked about, like garlic and ginger. Um, it also has onion, horseradish, and hot peppers like cayenne pepper. And, it, and you just mix all that with apple cider vinegar. And you have this really great elixir for clearing your sinuses and for combating, you know, um, the cold and flu and things like that. So. It's really easy to make, it's really easy to prepare, or you could buy it pre-made at you know, your local farmer's market. Make sure it's all natural ingredients and um, just take a shot of it, which is a little, <laughs> a little difficult, but like I said, it will clear your sinuses. <laughs> the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is elderberry. Now, elderberry is great for the cold and flu season because it's excellent for your immune system. It's packed with antioxidants, it also lessens stress in the body and it also protects your heart. Now you can make your own elderberry syrup. Um, I buy mine from my local farmer's market. It is made right here in my state, made with all natural ingredients. And it's actually really tasty. It's, it's actually a really yummy thing to take a shot of. I take a shot of it every single night and every time I take a shot, of, of elderberry or a fire cider. Always raise a glass to freedom and to health and wealth and prosperity and love. And, and then I take my shot and, and it's, it's actually really delicious. Next, I'm going to be talking about ashwagandha. Now ashwagandha is one of the most powerful herbs for boosting your immune system, for boosting your immune system and fighting stress. It has been shown to reduce stress and anxiety and what people don't realize is that, I mean, people do realize it, it's, it's out there, it's a known fact, it's common knowledge, but I feel like people don't really let it sink in that stress is what opens up the body for disease. When you are feeling high levels of stress and you're producing all that cortisol, you are breaking down your immune system defenses and you are opening yourself up to disease and making yourself vulnerable. So managing your stress and anxiety is crucial for strengthening your immune system because strength, because stress is a killer. Stress is what 
causes a lot of disease or like I said makes you more vulnerable to them it's like it's like ripping down the walls of your house and just being totally vulnerable to the world and having anybody be able to come waltz right in your house and take things out and bust things up and steal from you and hurt you uh, it, it's really important to manage your stress and ashwagandha um, has a lot of um, anti-anxiety benefits and manages stress in the body so i highly recommend getting your hands on something you can find it in powder form and just always remember to take care of yourself um, mentally emotionally um, avoid things that tr like really trigger you like the news and, and and things that make you feel high levels of stress really start becoming start really start becoming self-aware of what raises your stress levels what causes your anxiety what are the triggers that are making your heart race that are making you feel stressed and anxious really start paying attention to those things avoid them and learn how to manage the things that you can't avoid. Um, I'm really big into meditation, and deep breathing, full breath, three-part breathing into your chest, into your ribs, into your stomach, making sure that you're able to manage stressful moments in your life and work through them because when you let them escalate and you let them fester and you don't manage your stress, that's when you start becoming vulnerable uh, to infections and viruses and diseases. Um, ashwagandha is also very, uh, also, ashwagandha has also been known to uh, manage blood sugar as well. So if you are someone who's either on the line or has type two diabetes, really make sure you get your hands on ashwagandha and um, just start taking care of yourself fully inside out three part being trinity being we gotta take care of the mind the body and the spirit and um that's what i really hope to help you with um with this video so that you're inspired to really start taking care of yourself inside out every single inch of yourself every single cell in your body needs care and love and um you're the only person who can take care of it you know, your body does so much to take care of you. It just needs your help. Um, our bodies are miracles. They're constantly fighting and, and, and protecting us and doing the best that they can with what they're working with. You know, give your body what it needs so that its job is easier. Give your body what it needs so that it can continue to fight for you and continue to work for you and give you the life that you deserve, give you the energy and the vitality and the strength and the peace and um, the strength um, and the durability um, to get through and to function in life so that you can achieve more, you can do more, you can feel more, you can um, be happier and more joyful. Like diet is tied to our mental health and how we feel so let's start taking care of ourselves from the inside out it's not enough to just pamper ourselves and rub lotions and rub lo lotions and oils on our skin all that stuff is very important but we really, really need to be taking care of ourselves from the inside out next i'm going to talk about juicing now juicing is a great way to build your immune system um, it's all coming back to food and what we're putting in our body um, juicing first thing in the morning is great for detoxifying the body and um, giving it all of the enzymes and the vitamins and minerals and the phytonutrients that it needs um, to strengthen every system in our body. I want to talk about what to juice and how to juice and little secrets and tips that nobody ever tells you about juicing. So since this video is about specifically the immune system, I'm going to be talking about um, some of the best things to juice for your immune system, which is going to be citrus. Citrus, like lemons, limes, grapefruits, oranges, pineapple. Pineapple is one of the most powerful fruits that you can eat or drink. Pineapple is great for building the immune system. It's really great for um, cough and, and flu and it's delicious so there's really no downside to it i mean i love pineapple always have pineapple on me um, i like to buy it whole and chop it up and the reason why you should buy it whole instead of just the chunks 
I always have frozen pineapples as well, but I like to um, freeze them myself and buy them whole because you need the core of the pineapple. This is what no one tells you. Thank you, Benevolent Bliz. Um, I'm reading his book, Holy Water, which is the ultimate guide to cleansing your body. It's actually, <laughs> I love this book. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's actually a guide to washing your insides better than you wash your ass. And he talks about total cleansing and how to juice um, little tips and secrets on juicing and one of the things that he mentioned is um, the core of the pineapple has an enzyme called bromelain and it is extremely powerful in um, strengthening the immune system and fighting against cough and it's actually been proven to be stronger than cough syrup so I always keep the cores of my pineapples and I, I juice, I chop off a little bit of them and add them into my juice. Um, it's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It doesn't taste bad. It's, it's, it's just extra strength into your juice. Another big tip is when you are juicing, your citrus is like your oranges, your grapefruits, your lemons, your limes. All of the benefits are in the skin. The skin of your oranges, of your lemons, of your limes, they contain essential oils with phytonutrients and vitamins that are that have all the power in them. Of course, the fruit itself is great, but it's mostly fiber and water, and a lot of the vitamins is in the skin, which is another reason why you should be buying all of your foods, especially your fruits and vegetables, organic. Um, you don't want to be putting pesticides into your juice because all you're going to be doing is drinking a strong glass of poison. <laughs> you really need to start buying from your local farmer's market. Support your local farmer. Buy organic foods. And I don't understand why people don't buy from the farmer's market because it's cheaper. It's so much cheaper. The amount of produce I can get from the farmer's market for $30, I would have to pay like $60 to $70 at Harris Teeter. I don't understand why people don't go to the farmer's market. Like, let's just start supporting local farmers and the closer you buy to where you live, the better that food is gonna be for you. So those are my little tips and tricks for juicing. Um, the next thing I wanna get into is of course exercise and diet as a whole. Um, you know, I, I talked about earlier about avoiding high fructose corn syrup. You wanna avoid chemically processed foods. You wanna avoid, avoid the dyes and the things high in GMOs like soy and um, Frankenstein food with things that you can't even pronounce the name of. So really pay attention to what you're putting into your mouth and start being more mindful of what you eat. And of course, get plenty of exercise. Exercise is gonna strengthen the systems in your body. It's gonna strengthen your cells. It's gonna make you, keep you younger. It's also gonna regulate your mood and reduce stress and anxiety so that your stress levels aren't causing you to be vulnerable to disease. It's going to benefit you in every way, shape, and form. Make sure you're getting your exercise. I'm here for you guys. I'm here to help, okay? <laughs> like, you can do it. Like, let's start taking care of ourselves this year. Like, now's the time to do it. Now is when it really matters. So, let's start taking care of ourselves right now, this very second. And my very last tip is sleep. Making sure you're getting adequate amount of sleep. Um, when you're not getting enough sleep, you're also making yourself vulnerable. So make sure you get your sleep. And I know that sometimes it's hard. I've struggled with not being able to get sleep and um, I've had you know, little fits of insomnia here and there. Um, there was a time where I had a lot of trouble staying asleep, not so much falling asleep, but staying asleep throughout the night. And I've done quite a few things that have significantly improved um, my sleep. And if you want a video on that, let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to share how I get better sleep, how I've been able to achieve better sleep because I feel like sleep is something that a lot of people struggle with and neglect themselves with. 
um, with, with not getting the right proper amount of sleep. Thank you guys so much for watching. I sincerely hope that this was helpful and beneficial for you. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next one because there's plenty more where that came from. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful, amazing day. You're gorgeous, you're beautiful, you're amazing, and you are worthy of all the prosperity, love, and abundance that this life has to offer you. God bless. You're amazing. You're beautiful. I see you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.